Hey everybody, this is the first video that we'll be doing here about economics. Um, so let's dive right into what economics is. Um, this video will just be giving us kind of an introduction into econ. So, a little scenario for you here. Imagine you have $1,000 to live on for a month. With this money you have, you have to stock up on food, pay rent, utility bills, buy a new pair of shoes, get your computer repaired. You have so many needs and too many little money. Well, that is what the economy is all about using, economics is all about using limited resources to fulfill a great many needs. The word economy comes from a Greek word meaning one who manages a household. When people use the term, they are generally referring to a home nation or to the world as a whole. The economy of a region is determined by the choices its peoples make about what to produce, what to buy, and what to spend given the limited resources. Economics is a study of how people make these choices and the consequences of their decisions. So economics is really kind of an interesting subject, uh, putting down into your lecture notes there. Uh, it's a study of how people seek to satisfy their unlimited wants or unlimited needs and wants with the scarce resources by making choices. So all in our world right now there is scarcity, the gap between limited resources and unlimited wants. Uh, if your parents or you have been to the a uh, grocery store recently, you might have noticed that there is a scarcity of toilet paper or, say, of uh, hand sanitizer or soap, right, with this coronavirus going on. Uh, but there, those are examples of something called a shortage. Uh, but really, it's that scarcity is that there is never enough for every single person to have what exactly they want and need. Um, there's always scarcity. There's limited resources all around this world. Okay, We have limits, and because of those limits, we need to make choices. Uh, you also have the definitions of needs and wants on this slide. Okay, Want something you desire, need something you need. All right? So uh, moving on here, uh, as that first phrase stated, uh, when you hear people refer to the economy, they're oftentimes talking about a big nation and how that nation decides to figure out what they're going to produce and who is going to get it. Uh, this is what we call an economic system. Okay. It is uh, a way in which society decides what they're going to distribute um, with goods and services, goods, physical objects that people purchase, services, you know, uh, food service or uh, getting your oil changed or getting a haircut. It's actions that are provided by one person or another. So each nation has makes different decisions about how they uh, are going to produce goods, what goods to produce and distribute and who gets those goods and services. Each nation gets uh, has different ways of doing this. Okay, there's a couple different systems here, and we'll be going through those today. Uh, so the three economic questions that each nation has to answer: uh, What goods and services are we going to produce? Uh, is our country going to focus more on education, on health, on consumer goods? Consumer goods meaning things that you and I buy, uh, from cars to uh, to radios to iPhones. Uh, to you know, desks for schools. Uh, what goods are we going to produce? Okay, what are we going to focus on as a country in making? Uh, how are these goods and services going to be produced? Are they going to be done by human labor? Are they going to be done uh, by small farms? Are they going to be in big cities? And then how are these uh, goods going to be divided up? Or who is going to consume these goods? Um, how do we make the decision of, you know, when you make toilet paper, who gets the toilet paper? Okay. Different economic systems decide these three questions in different ways. So let's dive quick in here into the different economic systems. Uh, so it says, remember, different economic systems have evolved because different societies uh, place emphasis on different goals and priorities in their effort to answer the three economic questions. So four different economic systems. The first one is the traditional economy. Traditional economy, uh, you can kind of picture like back... Uh, hundreds of years ago, um, primitive societies, 
um, even you know very rural tribes in the Amazon or the Aborigine tribe in uh, Australia or African tribes in which it's a small close-knit uh, community and those three questions three economic questions of what are we going to make how are we going to make it and who's going to get it are all decided within that small group by uh, tradition by rituals by customs uh, and it's basically on the needs of, hey, how is our society going to survive? Okay, uh, I have a couple of just cow economy examples here. There's little ways to think about this. Uh, so for traditional economy, a way to think about this, you have two cows. I uh, use the milk from the cows within your village. The cows pull the plow to till up your agricultural fields. Sometimes you might have to kill a cow for special occasions to celebrate some momentous occasion, uh, you know, a wedding or a... Uh, celebration of harvest, um, but really the cows are at the basis of your uh, economy. Okay, you milk them, you use them to plow up your field. Uh, that's your traditional economy. Okay, habits, customs, rituals decide what's produced, how to produce it, and who is going to get it. Okay, uh, then we have a true market economy, which is a free market or capitalist society. Um, economic decisions are made by individuals and are based on exchange and trade. So, you know, I decide that I'm going to make uh, shoes, running shoes, or shoes for soccer, or shoes for ballet, or for dance, uh, and I'm going to sell them. Uh, and I'm going to set a price, and I'm going to try to sell all my shoes, and I'm going to use that money then to maybe expand my company um, to uh, sell more shoes. Uh, but I am the one making that decision, okay? Individuals make those economic decisions. What are we going to make? How are we going to make it? Who's going to get it? Individuals make those decisions. People, okay? Uh, this is called a free market system, a capitalist system, and it derives around, it uh, is centered around something called the market. A market is something where any place where... Uh, Buyers and sellers are allowed to exchange goods and services. Um, so I'm trying to, I was just talking about shoes. You know, a market for a shoe might be an actual storefront. You go to a place like, say, Fleet Feet or like uh, Payless. Although I think Payless might be going out of business, but uh, you go there, that's a market where you can buy shoes. There's someone selling shoes, you can buy shoes. Uh, you can do that online here uh, as well. Obviously, a lot of you might buy your shoes online. Uh, so markets exist because none of us produce all the goods and services that we need to satisfy our needs and wants. Okay, none of us, you know, go home and we spin our own clothes, produce our own food, uh, you know, make our own toilet paper. All right, I'm kind of fixated on the whole toilet paper thing here uh, today, but at any rate, you get my point. Okay, a market is a place where buyers and sellers come together and exchange goods and services. Uh, a couple things here about. Uh, uh, market systems that are within your notes there. Uh, market systems and why markets tend to work really well is that they're self-regulating. They don't necessarily need a ton of government intervention. They do in some cases, like we'll talk about, but they don't need a ton of it. The reason is is that they have a motivating interest, which is uh, motivating force, which is self-interest, and they have a regulating force, which is, is competition. Uh, and this is this whole thing is oftentimes referred to as the invisible hand and why markets work. Uh, so using my shoe example, uh, the self-regulating part is that uh, you know I'm making shoes, maybe because I like shoes and maybe because I you know like to design them, like to sell them, like to talk about them. Uh, it might be something a passion of mine. But really, my motivating force for doing that is that I'm trying to make money for myself. Okay, anytime anyone opens up a business, they're trying to make money for themselves. Okay, so that's my motivating force. Why do I want to keep selling more shoes? Why do I want to keep my business open? Why do I want to grow it so I can make more money? Okay, you look at like you know major shoe companies like Nike. Why did they get into business? Well, because they wanted to to sell shoes. I'm mean, Nike actually starts out selling shoes to to runners. And then expands from there to basketball and soccer and uh, all sorts of different shoes they sell today. Um, what's the regulating force? What is going to make it so that those market that that company you know makes a decent shoe? Well, it's competition with a market system. 
if Nike shoes are crummy or bad or are wearing out uh, or you know aren't in style, people will buy other shoes. And so if they buy other shoes, then that means that Nike would go out of business. Okay? So they always have to be innovating and coming up with new things. And it's the competition that regulates them and that makes them continue to make a better product and listen to their customers. Okay? That's called the invisible hand. It's not that there's somebody that is telling Nike or Puma or Adidas, hey, you got to you know, constantly be coming up with new shoes and upping your game. It's the fact that there's competition and the fact these companies want to do better to make more money for themselves, for their uh, uh, company, for their workers, uh, self-interest, competition. Those are the hallmarks of why free market system is self-regulating. Um, that whole thing is called the invisible hand, a phenomenon by, in which the interaction of buyers and sellers are motivated by self-interest and regulated by competition. Okay? So capitalism. Okay? You've got two cows. Uh, you sell one and buy a bull. You then have be able to multiply your herd and your economy grows. You're able to sell your cows and retire on the income. Right? So you're trying to grow your business because you want to get it bigger. Okay. Uh, centrally planned economies. Okay, so we had traditional economies, uh, market economies, and now centrally planned economies. Uh, centrally planned economies, an example of this would be communist uh, Cuba, communist Soviet Union, communist North Korea. Uh, the central government makes all the economic decisions about what goods and services are going to be made. Okay. Uh, the Government decides what are we going to make, who's going to make it, who's going to get it. They make all those economic decisions, and they are trying to decide anything for everything from cars to food to uh, you know military things to soap to uh, toilet paper. Again, back to the toilet paper. Uh, what is our country going to make? So, you know, like in Cuba, the government is deciding what is being made. North Korea, the government deciding what is being made. Everything from toothpaste to uh, cars to hats, right? What is being made has to go through the government. Okay? Uh, there's only three left, really, and China really is kind of communist, but China has something called special economic zones. Um, so they have a kind of a communist uh, part of their country where the government decides what's going to be made. But they also have some free market uh, capitalism in there. And that's where like Nike and Apple, where they make uh, all their goods as in these special economic zones that are not under the communist rule. But really there's only two true communist systems, North Korea and Cuba, uh, in the country still today. Okay, uh, My cow example here in communism, if you had two cows, the state would take both and give you some milk. Okay. Then there's a mixed economies, uh, which is what the United States are. We are a mixed economy. We're not a pure capitalist economy, not a pure market economy. We are a mixed economy. Mixed economies mix free market economies with limited government intervention. So they're a combination of our last two, century planned economies and market economies. Uh, they're in between those. There's some level of government intervention but there's also the market economy that is going on. Supply and demand, which we'll talk more about later on, still is in place. Markets are still in place. People are allowed to make their own economic decisions uh, about what they're going to make and what they're going to uh, produce and buy and how they're going to make it. They're allowed to make those decisions, but it is uh, also with some government regulation. I mean, look at it right now. This is a perfect example of this. Uh, the government is talking about bailing out, you know, the cruise industry or giving small business owners loans or money uh, or the airline industry's bailouts. Uh, that wouldn't happen in a market economy. In a market economy, if you don't make it, tough. You go out of business. In a mixed economy, the government plays a bigger role in the economy. Okay? They have regulations and they sometimes intervene into the economy. So our example here, uh, cow economy, okay, you have two cows again, you sell a cow, buy a bull, but you have to pay to have the bull registered and vaccinated, okay? Your herd multiplies, but you have to pay to register and vaccinate each new cow. You sell some of the milk from your herd, but you get taxed on the income you make, 
to pay for the roads of your village. So in a mixed economy, the government is involved some, but uh, you still are allowed to make your own economic decisions. So that video kind of wraps up here for you. Uh, the basics of economics defined, the three economic questions, uh, and then the four different economic systems that exist in our world. Thanks for listening.